Okay, hello, welcome back. It's been a little while. Right, heater matrix for the uh, 110 Defender heater box. You can see I have two different types here. One is bigger than the other. Well, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to strip out the heater matrix and replace it for something bigger. But we're also going to overhaul the heater box as well. And as you can see, it's not in a very good state. Ali Sport, some of you know, it's a UK company. They make lots of shiny bits out of aluminium and upgrades. You can see by their page, it's quite impressive what they do. Right, our heater matrix that we're replacing is from them. Now, there are two different types because there are two different types of heater matrix in the Defender. Downward facing pipes and horizontal facing pipes. And they have their relevant numbers, as you can see here. So the description goes on to say that it's a larger matrix and it has twice the capacity of a standard matrix. But it's not suitable for the Puma vehicles because they have a different heater altogether. You all know what a Defender heater is like, it's crap at the best of times. The price of this, you probably want to suck some air through your teeth and stand back. But if you look at the price of BTR1116 heater, it's nearly £700. And that's the whole heater box assembly. Your paddocks do a little bit cheaper, but this is what the sort of price we're looking at. You do know what I'm talking about because this is the heater box with the matrix on top. The modification mainly is making the retaining plate larger so it will accept the heater. And you can see by the thickness of it, there's a fair bit of metal that needs to come off. But it will fit in the heater box with very little problem. So first of all, we're going to start with removing the heater box because some of you don't know how to do this. And actually, this was quite strange to me at first. Um, it doesn't just lift out, should I say. So first of all, you disconnect the cables, making a note of how they were set up and then pop off these green retainers. Make sure you don't lose them because they're hard to get hold of. Right, so down by the side here, here's the second cable control. I'm not going to show you how to set these up because I don't have a vehicle anymore. So just make a note of how they work. The retainer for the heater box here in the footwell on the passenger side on a right hand drive vehicle. That goes through to a bracket here and the chances are that it is rusted solid, but that is nut and bolts. Okay, so what you can do is give it some WD-40 and then get your spanner on it and use a ratchet. You could possibly have somebody in the engine bay, but sometimes you can get the spanner to catch and wind it off. But this one was all right. You can see here the spanner is jammed in and that is a 10 mil. Okay, you have two bolts up at the top here, which you can undo. They're easy because they're riv nutted into the bulkhead. There's a couple of multi plugs that you can disconnect. One of these is missing here, it's been crimped up, and the other one is from the resistor to the motor itself, which actually you don't need to disconnect. The colours are slightly different, but you have a yellow uh, traces in both, you have purple, and then you have green to green with grey traces. That's not too much of an issue, but there should be a multi plug for you. Right, so there is more to this because you've got to remove a few more things like the uh, washer bottle if it happens to be a 300 TDI. I know they're different in different places on Land Rovers or Defender, should I say. Um, we've got the trusty WD-40 and the pipes. What I've done here is I've turned it back on itself so it's coming out of the engine back into the engine and bypassing the heater so we can still run without a heater. Along here, what you have to do is remove this uh, venting duct, and this is removed by taking the screws off here, okay, and you can uh, slide it forward. Once I can get this screw out, okay, I'll pull this forward, and that has given us enough space to then get our heater box and lift it out of the way. So I'll demonstrate this, okay, making sure that I'm not going to catch or snag anything. And just remember there is fluid in here, so what we can do is then wiggle it and it will come out. Remember it's stuck into the bulkhead recess, okay, so that's out, there's no problem there. There are two seals, one to the bulkhead and one to the ducting. It might vary on different Land Rovers, but that's out. 
So what you can see down here is that some of the uh, bulkhead seal has been left, so that's uh, the seal is damaged and will need to be replaced anyway. Um, the seal is here, that's one on the outer, and then you have an inner, which you have to uh, scrape out because it's glued in there. Right, so basically you want to use a scraper, push the glue off, and then lift it out. And it is actually a little bit of a mess in there because this uh, heater box is quite old right so the bracket that holds it to the bulkhead this is held on by three bolts one on the heater motor and then two where my hand is and then once you've removed that bracket then you can go ahead and undo the screws that hold these retaining plates on uh, Phillips heads and then you can split this in half this holds the bottom half of the heater matrix as you can see there the top is very much the same, you undo all of the screws with a Phillips screwdriver and then the plate itself is one piece so you have to lift out the plate and the heater matrix all in one go like this. Okay so you can see this box is a bit raggedy and we've got a fair bit of work to do even though the heater matrix itself isn't in bad condition, not leaking. Right, so you've seen this already, the new heater matrix is a lot larger and the capacity is much better for providing heat, well, would hope anyway. So basically the retaining plates are too small or the apertures are too small and we'll have to cut these to get these bigger. Just before we do, I'm going to show you the condition of this, it's rusty, I'm not happy with this, so we're going to have to do some rectification work on the box and the motor. I've got to take out this resistor piece here, that's four rivets, and you can knock down most of the heater box, but I've basically stripped it, rust treated it, and primed it, as you can see here, and I've done this by spray. Unfortunately, I got the wrong satin black and it came out gloss, so I've had to key it back down. But say, for instance, your heater box was in fairly good condition, then you could just do what you want to. You can either repaint it or just fit the matrix and put it back together. But usually uh, this area here is uh, very corroded, so we're going to have to do something like use a Corollus rust stabilizing primer to make sure the rust doesn't come back too quickly. That goes on underneath the primer, it's primed and then top coated. You could actually knock the heater box right down, but I've only taken a few bits off to get a half decent job. But we need to be able to reshape these plates so we can get them to fit the heater matrix. And this is the whole point of the tutorial. So I'm going to show you here that how I do it, I make a template. So basically using a piece of cardboard, drawing around the pieces that we need to cut and then cutting out the cardboard. Once the templates have been cut, we can then assess how much we need to take off. And the easiest thing here, because we're not shaving metal at the moment, we can cut out cardboard to our heart's content until we've got it right. If you make it too big, then you can make another template and carry on until you've got it. So you see here, you lay the template on top of your uh, piece of metal, and now you can mark it out and cut. Right, so the top plate as well, I'll just show you here, it actually slips over. Well, it slips in like so. So I have a good fit and I'm happy with this. So I will go ahead now and mark it out on the metal and then cut. So looking at this, after cutting it fits just like this, which is a treat. But you can see how it's marked out. This is how much needs to be cut out. And this is going to be a bit of a pain. What I did was use a cutting blade on an angle grinder and cut through. And of course it's always good to cut less and then take a little bit more off than it is to cut too much off and make a real balls up of it. So basically what I've got here is a tiny little grinding uh, dentist type of uh, die grinder. And this is, well, you could call it a Dremel. So I'm just taking off the metal until the thing actually fits. This is the tool I was using. I can't tell you which product it was. I actually borrowed it, but you can see here that it has a very good die grinder bit on the end. Right, so we've got it that far and it fits perfectly. There'll be some more holes that need drilling, but I'll leave that till after it's been put into place. But all the holes match up on the top plate. And the bottom two plates, you do exactly the same thing. You just shape them out until you have a decent fit. It couldn't be easier, could it? 
All you need is the holes to line up and the heater matrix to fit in the brackets rather snugly. Okay, so I've got Corollus S2, which is a primer. It kills rust. And basically, I'm using it as a ground primer before I primer it and then put a top coat on it. What you can see is the matrix is aluminium. Now, I'm going to paint the tanks, but aluminium, when you paint it or prime it, first of all, you need an etch primer so you get a good chemical fix to the metal so the paint doesn't flake off later. Etch primer is the best thing to use, and this is a two-pack etch primer. You've got to be careful with this because it's got an activator and it is actually harmful. So use sensible precaution and decent breathing apparatus and gloves and such like. That's if you're going to paint the top and the bottom of the heater matrix to make it blend in. The choice is yours. So like I said, I didn't get the right type of satin black, so I keyed it back down again. And eventually from the paint supplier, we got a matte black, which is only 25% matting agent. It was primed with a primer that's compatible with the paint and then top coated with QDP. It's only like a one coat paint, so quick spray job on that. And all the parts are black so it can be reassembled and look halfway decent. Okay, so you're not uncompetent, so I don't need to tell you. Just put the top plate and the heater matrix in together first of all and screw it down. You'll probably notice there's some grease marks on the paintwork. Okay, not everything went quite well. I had to drill out some holes with a 2mm drill bit to make sure that this was clamped down properly. Now, the screws that I'm using are self-tappers with a wide head. The old screws that came out of the unit, as you can see in here, there's a few rusty ones. It's a bit of a mix, but they're really no good to put back in. So I've used these screws. I drilled them out because they didn't quite line up and then screwed them down. Basically, if the screws aren't going to line up and everything else fits okay, then I don't think it would be an issue if it's only one or two. If it was more than that, you'd have to reassess what you're doing. Now, if you look at the body here, you can see grease all over it. This is just from my hands touching it over a very short period. This is something, just be aware of it if you ever do any paint jobs, is that your hands emit grease all the time. Right, so the bottom plate again can be put into place and screwed down. Hopefully all the screws line up. Okay, so pay attention to the heater matrix or the bottom of it. When we stripped it out, there's some foam on this heater matrix. Now there's no point in getting any of this material, original OEM, because uh, there's no use for it. So what I'll show you here that I have something called a Tessamol, which you can buy off eBay. This is a sticky back foam, for want of a better word, and this is excellent stuff for padding out. I've got some of this on the bottom of my drill box, which uh, stops me scratching paintwork on new trucks when I'm fitting stuff. So basically the Tessamol cut with a pair of scissors or sharp blade. Okay, now it's cut to the uh, size of the bottom of the heater matrix here, and then I'll stick this one down. Thing is here, and I'm going to show you this, is that the heater matrix bottom doesn't protrude out as much as what it did on the original. So I'm going to have to double it and then treble it to pack this out to the bottom bracket. Just not too tight, it's just enough to stop it vibrating or rattling about in the box. There is actually padding in the heater box itself, which we didn't remove. Now, I'm putting the bracket on. I've put three of these layers of Tessamol in. You could actually put foam in there just to pack it out a little bit. And away we go. Look, there's the three block here. Now, there's not much I can do about it. It doesn't look pretty, but you won't see this on the vehicle. Bracket, again, fits on the heater motor and then the two bolts on the bracket and then screw it up. That actually was a little bit of a tight fit because this is also a support bracket for the motor. Right, so new nuts all round. And then what I do, basically I could have taken all the rivets out and then put fresh ones in to make it look good, but I haven't. I'd prefer to have this black. So I'm just using a little bit of touch-up paint and touching in the nuts and bolts and any other rivets that I had to use when fixing this back together. Just out of personal preference. Right, so the last thing is the seals around the top here. You've got to buy new because these are wrecked. You need to clean the surfaces off on your bulkhead and on the heater box too. And you should have done this before you painted it. You can see here what's left on the bulkhead. That can be cleaned off with um, standard thinners. 
and don't scrape the paintwork too much. Seals are available from places like Paddock Spares and you can see the prices here, you're just about £20 for this one. Right, so that's the old heater matrix in the bin, that's not worth much. And then we can go ahead and, well, we've got to replace this resistor unit because it actually doesn't work, but it hasn't got a multi-plug on it. And as I say, the devil's work is never quite finished. 